So welcome everybody. This is, this is, um, I think it might be our fourth or fifth uh, installment of the Knowledge Accelerant platform, where we um, where we use webinars to kind of add value to what we do under the Digital Accelerant umbrella. Um, just for you, for those who don't know me, there's a, a, a one or two of you, if if that. My name is Gabe O'Neill. I'm the founder of Digital Accelerant, and I am the godfather of the digital business card. So if you text the word Gabe to the number twenty one thousand. My card will land straight on your phone, um, and it is a lead generator. Uh, it is a, a something that um, it brings in business for you in, in a number of different ways. Um, you, just just being able to remember your, your keyword, having having people remember your keyword and pass it on is a great source of business. Um, and again, with Digital Accelerant is my company. Under that umbrella is Referral Accelerant, which is our networking our networking events. Uh, that today we're we're do, working under our knowledge accelerant brand, which is uh, the webinars that we provide, and also there's a third one which is called business accelerant, where we have each other work, work on uh, help each other boost each other's LinkedIn engagement, and, and they're called engagement pods, where we comment and like each other's um, posts on on LinkedIn and other platforms. So that's kind of uh, it, 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 what we're all about here is to bring you business in as, in as many different ways as we can. And today, Harry's going to teach us how we can bring us more business through uh, better sales techniques. If you text um, Gabe to 21,000, you get access to mm -hmm. all of those events. If you want to share the networking and, and, and the webinars, you can just have, have other people text the word network to 21,000. Um, and if you want to um, learn more from me about what we do, get involved somehow, just uh, jump on my calendar and I'd be happy to talk to you. Um, you can just go to Calendly.com slash Gabe O'Neill. Uh, this is um, Harry Spate. I want to introduce him. Um, he is a le sales leadership coach from South Florida. He's currently the sales leader at HGI Technologies and, and podcast host at Lead, Sell and Grow with, with his partner. Uh, the human experience. Um, and again, um, you know, uh, um, so I'll just basically turn it over to Harry. Um, I met Harry during a networking event not too long ago, and we had a one-on-one. -on -one. I was very impressed by him. I think that he's going to just give us some common sense things and, and get us uh, going in sales. So I won't take up any more of your time. I'll turn it right over to Harry. Excellent. Well, it's good to meet you all. Um, and we are recording, so Gabe made sure uh, he reminded me to remind him, so that's awesome. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day. I am a person who is absolutely passionate about sales. I feel that sales drives the economy. Uh, without a sale, there's not a whole lot left that goes on in life, in business. Um, and I've been in this craft for a long time, uh, starting out of, uh, years ago, I was a missionary, believe it or not. Uh, but selling ideas is definitely selling. Uh, I went from there to, uh, trying to sell health insurance for a minute. Um, I found myself in people's homes in the evening and, working, getting a couple sales a week and making a whopping a hundred, two hundred dollars here and there. And then I said, you know, I've got to get into B to B selling more and got into the uh, copier document industry in Connecticut. I spent a few years there. Then I moved down to Washington, DC for about the next 15 years and had an office uh, two blocks from the White House. Uh, very exciting times. I loved it. I walked around the White House every day. Um, and then I moved to Florida a few years ago when I got sick of the commute in the DC metropolitan area. So just a little background. Um, you know, sales to me has changed. Uh, you know, everyone's been talking. I mean, when I was in it and still a minute, people keep saying things like, well, I'm just hoping it doesn't change. Well, I've got news for you. It's already changed. I mean, how? I mean, prior to COVID, um, the whole idea of people ghosting, saying they're in the market for something, telling you 
looking at your pricing, saying I'm going for it, and then disappearing. I don't know if any of you have experienced that, but uh, that's one of the frustrating things. Um, and you know, feel free to use the chat because that will help me um, make sure you're not falling asleep and you know, I'll try to take advantage of that. But if you chat in um, some of your top challenges, if it's ghosting, if it's uh, you know, how to formulate a good email, I mean, you name it. Uh, no one's responding to an email even, um, you know, if it's saying your price is too high, I can get it cheaper online. I mean, you know them all, you hear them every day and I hear them every day. So uh, I'm just gonna start sharing my screen here. And if you guys can see this, nice little light bulb. Does that work for you? Ideas to grow your small business so far? You got a thumbs up? Yeah, yes. we can see it. Yeah. All right, great. This is fun already. So there's a million ideas out there in sales. Um, you know, you can get, you can spend money on anything in sales. I really try to be, look at what a person's unique situation is because I believe everybody has their own personality. Even though there's only a few personality types, but some people are selling systems, right? Where you just learn how to sell around a circle. And in that circle at the end, you're going to ask the client, well, does this make sense to go ahead? Can we go ahead and draw it up or something like that? And then you get yes or no, and you felt like, okay, great. I did, if I do a million of these, I'm going to get some sales. So people that do that feel that sales is a numbers game. Um, and as companies and businesses look at sales, you know, there's different things that go in their mind. Like, for instance, maybe I need to have better closing techniques. We are in front of people, but we can't close the deal. So some people spend money on closing closing and then others yeah uh, if you want to be on it or say no i think i've got um i'm not sure if that's some feedback here but uh so it could be closing uh different things and so my approach today is really uh i don't know if anyone has a friend a client that has become a friend does that happen with anyone? Okay, great. So I want you to think about that for a second, that that client at one time was a stranger, you met them somewhere, and then over time they started buying from you. And typically when you have a client that's a friend, think about why they're friends, right? You have clients that are not friends and clients that are friends, right? And it's just the, the nature of the beast. Well, think about what you do differently with a client that's a friend, right? Okay, so that's kind of in our mind today. So as people look at uh, ways that they can grow their small business or in sales, I believe everyone is an entrepreneur. You're selling, it is your business. It's to me a franchise. I mean, I've looked at buying franchises years ago and I said, why the heck am I doing this? My sales career is like a franchise, right? I run my own business, so to speak. And the only difference is, is that I'm not paying someone a monthly figure, uh, but I can make just as much money. I can build a really nice career out of selling. So let's see if I can get this to change screens. And of course not, okay. So let's see what I need to do. Okay. so. As people look at where they want to spend money, you've got, you know, the SEOs out there. Um, people are spending a lot on Google ads. People are spending money on Facebook ads. People are spending money on marketing for their companies. Um, and, you know, we're all in this world now um, that we have to get better in Zoom. Is everyone here feeling pretty good about their use of Zoom and making connections with people? So obviously uh, in a room, it's a little bit different as you notice, but there's great techniques that are out there about building relationships with Zoom. 
Um, one of the things it talks about, and I've just done some reading on this, is, you know, it's hard to look at a TV screen and say that person, Robert Gershon, is real, right? But I know Robert Gershon's real because he just smiled, and the chances of someone smiling on TV, just when I say something, are pretty remote. So I know Robert's real. So if Robert were speaking and I was just taking notes the, and listening, the key thing in Zoom is that because it's so hard to build a relationship is that you want to repeat back what the person is telling you. So it really shows that you're listening. So it is called active listening. And a lot of people think active listening is saying, uh-huh, yep, uh-huh, nodding their head. No, that's annoying. That's annoying listening because you're throwing off everyone else and you may be throwing off the person that's telling you what they feel. So nodding, right? And then listening and then saying something along the lines, well, this has been really helpful. Thank you for sharing that. So what I'm getting out of that, these three things are really what's of interest to you, to you today, right? And then the person will say yes, and now the relationship starts to build because they see that Robert Gershon is actually listening. Now, I can't say anything about Andrea, but when I call on Andrea, I'll know if she's listening. Well, Linda already was, right? Because she told me she makes mac and cheese. But you see what I'm doing, right? I am calling people out a little bit just to stay alert and not fall asleep, right? Because in these Zoom meetings, it's really difficult uh, not to fall asleep. So has anyone seen you know, these are the uh, uh, a character here that's uh, looking at uh, climbing a ladder here and spending money on various things like Facebook, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, you name it. We can all spend a lot of time there and we can spend a lot of money there. That's what this is. This is not what that's about, right? I'm, I understand that. Um, but there's stuff that you can do for free and without spending a ton of money. And that's what I'm all about. Hope that makes sense. But free to me, if it's quality is good. So this is where some companies start thinking about, well, I was just speaking to a small business owner the other day and they said, you know what? My business is small. I'm getting too busy. I'm thinking of hiring a salesperson. Are there any small business owners here? And right now I am seeing only six. Let's see if you can put in the chat, if there's a small business owner with employees that's doing a bit of everything and periodically thinks of hiring a salesperson. Does anyone do that? And does not seem like I'm getting a whole lot of that. So, oh, wait a minute. Here's some chats. All right. All right, so nothing yet there. And now my chat view is up. Uh, so just on the idea of like this, Andrea says she does it all, okay? So Andrea, you may eventually get so busy that you start thinking about hiring a salesperson. Well, that's really what most small businesses do. They get, they do everything and then they start slacking on the sales and they say, well, I'll just hand this off to someone that's going to make the calls. The problem is this may be the person you hire, <laughs> right? And what's the difference between this person and you? A lot, right? I'm thinking most of you just by seeing you are going to dress a whole lot better uh, he's got the nice Jackie Gleason tie from the 1950s with his plaid jacket from the 1970s. And when people think of salespeople, they think of used cars, someone that's, be a, that's a telemarketer, that's calling. Um, you know, Stephanie mentioned integrity. Uh, you know, this does not happen, right? You don't frequently, you don't always get integrity with someone that you hire in sales. Um, 
I know I've gone through the lack of integrity. I had a guy who was killing it in sales and then he um, got discovered. Um, he was out sick for a while. His calls were forwarded to me and I found out why he was killing it in sales is because he was offering free computers and all kinds of things and we didn't sell computers. Um, so the person was scandalous and actually had the police show up at his house. So you never know, right? Um, people, this was a very religious person and really played the game. And yet, and, and you know, behind the scenes, he was a wanted man uh, and he acted like a total shyster. So people can fool you. So what do you think about this? Has anyone ever thought, feel free to use the chat. When they think of selling, do they think of helping? And if you could just put in uh, briefly why you think selling is helping. There you go, Daryl. Okay, great. Thank you, Stephanie. Andrea, yep. So, I like it. Yes, it's similar to counseling for sure. Um, and makes, okay, great. So these are some great ideas and great thoughts. Uh, Susan, I love it, servant mentality. So think about the product you sell. Uh, there's a great line, some brilliant person uh, wrote it, shared it, tells it, all I'm doing is plagiarizing. People don't buy a drill, they buy something to make a hole, right? The hole is what they want, the drill gets them to the hole. So what is it that people are buying from you and really what is the outcome that they want, right? So that's something that, you know, people are not buying, uh, speaking to Gabriel, no one's buying low voltage security because they want to spend money on low voltage security, right? They're buying something, but it's not low voltage security, right? Someone mentioned skincare or skincare products. And I forgot if uh, who that was, but I know it was a nice lady and one of our early attendees. And, you know, people don't buy skincare just because they want a bunch of uh, makeup and skincare in their uh, bureau or in their uh, medicine cabinet, right? They're doing something because they're buying that so they can look beautiful, right? So they're buying the low voltage security so that they can feel more secure, right? Or they can protect their staff or they can protect their, uh, their products or their technology or their building or whatever it is. So when someone asks you what you do, think about how you respond. So someone said something that was really great and I forgot what it was. I should have made a note, um, but it was in here in the chat. And if I could just quickly find that. Yeah, maybe I heard it earlier, but the, uh, the idea is think beyond saying I sell X, right? Think how you solve problems. There's a great book by Anthony Anarino, uh, the only sales guide you will ever need. And in it, he said, and it's, a cha it's chapter nine, I, that's like a guidebook for me. He writes, sales, if you answer, when people ask what you do and you answer, I sell blank, your answer is wrong. You sell outcomes. So think about at the next time you're at a network event and say, um, I sell uh, widgets, right? Or I sell car parts, or I sell 
um, restaurant equipment, right? Why do people buy these things? Not because they need restaurant equipment, they need to prepare outstanding meals for their guests. So I provide uh, whatever it is, I provide technology or solutions that help restaurants provide outstanding meals, right? So now people are thinking, oh, well, okay, that's a little more exciting and it solves problems, right? Making sense so far? Thumbs up, everyone awake? Gabe, we awake? Excellent. All right, so next on our slide, after selling is helping, is this question taken from Ferris Bueller, um, one of my all time favorite movies. Who knows your product and service better than you, right? So this is where the helping comes in. We know what we're selling. We know how it's helping people. Um, the problem is a lot of us do this. And when we're talking about what we sell and how great it is and how bad everyone else is, um, what do we sound like? Do you sound like you're trying to help or do you sound like a salesperson? Salesperson. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that's really not what people are looking for. So I was speaking to a nice person the other day and this line about, this is one of her challenges, is that every time she spoke to someone, she felt like she needed to say, this is what I do. Remember me when you need X, every time, right? And some salespeople are like that. And they feel like the more they tell people it's marketing and it's getting my name out. So I'm going to tell Gabe over and over and over again that I do sales consulting, right? And Gabe, if you need anyone that does sales consulting, think of Harry. Does Gabe think that Harry is a friend at this point or is Harry the salesperson? And I uh, appreciate that, Stephanie, about never dismissing your competition. Um, that's really good. Um, you're, just cramming, you're just cramming the product down his throat at that point. Yes, exactly. And I appreciate the comments. So feel free to unmute yourselves when you want to chat because I'm having a heck of a time to stay, stay focused on uh, chat versus speaking. So just unmute and uh, say what you feel. Uh, and I appreciate that because people do feel that they're, they're crammed with information. This is a uh, you know, diary of the mouth. It's word vomiting. You know, once you start down that path and you think that's what people want to hear, it's hard to stop. And then you have the other extreme. I don't know if you've ever gone to any physical networking events and is this uh, what you see? Right, where you see people. Just, yeah, exactly, right? So do you want to talk to these people? Do these people care about you? No, I mean, right. I mean, so this is, I mean, this is the state of the world, right? So if you're at a network meeting, well, you got to think about why am I here in the first place? And it's here to meet and greet and build new relationships. I can't tell you how many times I go to network meetings and I see someone doing this and I'm like, okay. And the worst is that they're doing it while you're speaking to them. Right. I mean, has this ever happened? Uh, so I won't go there, but I mean, so you're sending messages, right? So sales is helping, but if you're only talking about your product, then the people that you're trying to sell to are not your friends, right? They're clients, they're customers, but if you can't talk to them about their kid's birthday party, you know, share a nice article with them, uh, related to what is their career or something about their family and not ask about your business. If you can't do it without throwing in, remember me, or I'm just following up. I know by the way, 
you just went from friend to salesperson very quickly. Does that make sense? Gary, I, I've even gone as far as actually talking to a, you know, talking to somebody on a face-to-face -face back in the day, and they'll pick up their phone and absolutely ignore somebody or ignore me uh -huh. and stop talking. Just sit there and wait your turn. And all of a sudden, one of two things either happens. Either they become embarrassed, which is not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but they also will sometimes recognize the fact that they are actually being rude. And, you know, sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's not, uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing to call, to tell somebody if, uh, if you need to take that, go ahead. If this isn't that important, maybe we should reschedule. You know, if you're, if you're just down here to have someone come down here and tell you the cost of something, then I could have done that over the phone. Just so yeah. you know. No, that's really good. And uh, in fact, I've been at meetings before and I recognize uh, when going in back in the day, and you can tell on a Zoom when people are distracted. And it's such a great thing to say, I, I can see you're busy. How about we reschedule? Will that work for you? Even if I give you 20 minutes, an hour, you know, if you're out in that area and it's out, you know, face to face, just say, I'll go get a coffee, just handle what's happening or I'll reschedule to tomorrow, next week. Um, but what's the situation, right? If they're already distracted, what good is your sales presentation at that point? Anybody? Well, unless they're the type of person that works at about 27 different things at once and you're selling them a $10 widget, you know, that they're willing to make the decision on the fly, you know, maybe, but when you're trying to sell them a couple thousand dollar item or, you know, a hundred thousand dollar renovation or something, I want your undivided attention. I don't want exactly. you to come back after the fact and go, well, what did this hit? Well, I told you that. Well, we discussed that. That, that you can run a big problems with that. So yeah, it depends on what you're selling and, you know, the type of person you're dealing with, I guess. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I think that no matter what you're selling and when people are multitasking, you hit the nail on the head, Robin, is it Robin? Uh, you hit the nail on the head is that uh, people are distracted and they're, you know, I don't, it's hard enough to sell. It's really hard to sell when someone's got, you know, my wife's uh, giving birth or uh, my house is on fire or some tragedy going on. They're viewing it as a tragedy and then they're exasperated and listening to you and they want you to do what? What is it they want you to do at that point? Go away. Go away. Shut up and leave. Yeah, they, they want you to go away, but they may be polite and they'll put the phone down and keep looking at it and say, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I just got something on my mind, but you don't have to go. That's the point where you just know that nothing is happening good for you. Mm -hmm. And you just say, let's just reschedule. What I have here for you, I think is going to be life changing or could really make an impact. And you've got a million things going on. Can we just do this and just look at our calendars and reschedule? And, and that's, and that's part of the relationship building, I think, because you, you get to know one another, you could read one another. I had a situation last week in an email dialogue that was just going totally off base. And I said to the person, do you have time to talk to me? Let's have a conversation. Well, we set it up and we hit it off immediately. And now we're going to be working together on a project because we, he says, you were a breath of fresh air. I'm glad that we spoke. And it was just a different, and it fit into his schedule. And that, that was great. And on that note, I apologize. I have to speak to a producer with a client now for a TV. All right, great. And Thanks for the input. Appreciate it, Andrea. Thank you. Good luck, Robin. Robin. So let me I'll ask tell you a Andrea, question. Good luck on her uh, meeting she's going into. Let me All ask right. you. Let me ask you a question, Harry. You, you mentioned this before about a ghosting. So I had a client the other day. Um, we had an hour Zoom or whatever. We went through everything about the digital card. Loved it. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'll probably give you – I'll come back tomorrow and, and give you that information. And then the, 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 the familiar ghost come, <laughs> entered the, <laughs> enters the fray. What is going on when people do that? And what and is there, is there anything – that you, I mean, because I'm afraid that if I lose a person on a call, 
then they're going to be gone. And it's, it's, and sometimes they actually are. So, and, and that's where I think that I lack in my closing, you know, how, well, that person was ready to buy, but I didn't close yeah. the person. Okay. So I'm ready to buy at times too. And think about when you're ready to buy. What can happen between the time you're ready to buy and when you think you're supposed to buy? What can happen? Or flat tires, and you have to buy new rims for your car, and the refrigerator broke, and, 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 and. Stuff happens. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So stuff, I love this line. Stuff happens. Right. Yes. So stuff happens, and people also have a hard time saying what to people they like. What you know. What's that? I can't no. do it or I need help. help. Yeah, yeah, right. So there are times saying no, and I apologize. I've got some thunder in the background. Perfect time for that. Um, but so, Gabe, I do it all the time. I tell people I'm going to get something. I frequently get it, but it doesn't happen on the timeline when I'm thinking, when I'm talking to the person. Because once I go away, and you said it, what happens to me, right? Squirrel. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So does it mean I'm not interested? Or does it mean I just got distracted? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And then when you call, the person now is either hot, warm, or cool. Right. About your product. And what the longer that goes by, what happens? The more it cools down. Yeah, exactly. So when they do pick up again, this is where another challenge is with salespeople, is what do they do when the person picks up the phone eventually? What is it, the first thing they ask? After, how are you? Good, great that you picked up, thank God. I've been trying you for a million times, right? You never want to say that. But then what do most people do, do you think? Are you ready to buy? There you go. Right? And so now just think two, three, four weeks have passed. My mind is on my uh, uh, American, no, excuse me, my macaroni and cheese because I just got a catered mac, mac and cheese at my house and I'm sniffing and ready to pick it. And I pick up the phone and I went, oh, am I ready? No, I'm ready to eat my mac and cheese, right? I'm distracted. So Andrea, I think it was, said, is this a good time, right? Ask that, is this a good time? And then go back into, you know, we had a great conversation a couple of weeks ago. I know a million things that came up, but I just want to revisit, if you have some time, and revisit uh, some of the things that we're doing and share a story, right? Share a success story and rekindle. And after the success story, say, is this something you want to revisit uh, anytime soon? Right? No need for a strong close because mm -hmm. if they, if you get them, you know, they could change. They, I mean, they could probably cancel the credit card, right? I mean, does that ever happen? They cancel the order, right? I want people that are going to be stable with the order and, you know, I'm going to be their best friend. And the strong close technique is, I, I don't believe in it anymore, right? I used to want to hire bulls in the China shop so they could get past all the no and basically force people through guilt to make, sign something. Now that's just not today's buyer. But does that help, Gabe? Yes, it all? does. It, it does because I don't have those hard closing techniques anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good, I guess. Okay, so that... Let me just ask you. So if someone says, I'll do it this week, what do you do uh, when you, uh, before you hang up the phone? Well, right? the, the one thing that I did learn from a sales trainer is he said, uh, if, when we get close to the end, I say, how would you like to proceed with this, with, with the digital card? That's what I'll say to them. Okay. I've, I've then, uh, so a typical answer is, well, uh, give me a couple of days and I'll do it. Something, yeah, something like one? that. Yeah, kind okay. of. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what do you do? Then I, then I, I, I touch them back in a couple of days. 
Okay. I say just checking in, seeing how you're doing with the digital card. Okay. And I either either they buy it or or I don't hear from them, one of the okay. other. Okay. All right. So can we do uh, Stephanie? Stephanie Ayers, speak to me. So I, we are trained that you need to schedule an official follow-up. I'm not saying I am really good at that, but if you schedule, okay, you say you want to talk in a couple of days. All right. Well, in a couple of days, that's Friday. I'm available at 2 o'clock. Will that work for you? Yeah. So virtually everyone has their calendar. Back in the day, uh, we used to have to say, is your calendar handy? But most people's calendar is their phone and they're probably holding it. So can we commit to next time someone says, I need a couple of days, say, say something like, is three days good? Right? Give them more than a couple of days and just take all the pressure off. Mentally, you guys are best friends, right? So how, how would you treat your best friend, right? You're helping, you're not closing. So say, all right, so today is Wednesday or whatever day it is. Is Monday a good day to follow up? Because you're going to plant the seed that you're going to follow up. And they say yes. And then the next line is the critical one. What time is good for you? And what will you do with the mindset? You got to go back, right? You got to go back in that conversation and not just ask for the order. You have to reconnect, right? You have to rebuild your case a little bit. And then here's another line you want to say. So you said uh, a couple of days ago, uh, you needed a little time to think. I just want to know between now and then, has anything come up that might have put some doubt in your mind or changed your mind? Did you repeat that? Are you saying that at the, at the, after the three days you asked them that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I, I want to reconnect. Right. Right. Because if I go for the close and they say, I'm not ready for it, then you're in what kind of relationship? What kind of position are you in? Push and pull. Yeah. It's tough. Right. Right. Because they've already said no. Now they're uncomfortable. Right. Because people, when they're saying no to salespeople, unless they just hate us, but if they've already committed, now they're uncomfortable. It's, real tough to make them feel comfortable. Has that been your experience, Gabe? Um, yeah. Yeah. So let's, have you ever tried the, just opening the door to what could have come up that distracted them or put some doubt in their mind? Have I haven't tried, tried that? that. Well, I haven't tried that. I've, I have tried the, I think it, and I was called a rookie for doing this by somebody when you say, is there, is there any reason why you wouldn't do this and to, to actually bring up the, the objection so that you can overcome it? Yeah. Um, I mean, is, 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 is there a reason, do you have a reason why you wouldn't buy a digital card or something like that? And I yeah. was told that that was a total rookie move and yada, yada, yada. I mean, what yeah. do I know? <laughs> I'm not, okay. Yeah. So I, I'm not crazy about the line. Right. Right. But, you know, so you want what, right? What are some of the things that you've been hearing or what are some of the things you've been thinking about since we last spoke? Okay. Right. Just get back into the conversation. A simple, what have you been thinking about? It's great to reconnect. Since we last spoke, what have you been thinking about as far as, you know, this whole concept of having your virtual web page by texting 21,000 uh, to me? What, what have you been thinking about? I like and that. then just hear the objections, right? Yeah. Asking, so Robin says, ask if they have any questions. It's, it's better than not asking anything, Robin. Uh, I'm not a fan of that question or that line because it's too vague, right? And when people, you have a short moment with our intention, uh, attention spans, 
is that when you ask people if they have any questions, the first thing that's going to come to the mind is what? No. Right? Think about... Why you know, is the sky blue? That's what comes to my mind. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so you go to the clothing store, you go to uh, whatever. Back in the day when they used to have uh, clerks, uh, they come up and while you're looking at ties, can I help you? And you say, no. Right? I mean, I don't know if women did that, but all, every one of us guys says no. But we're looking at something. We don't have any questions. We don't need any help because our brain is programmed that way. But if someone says, what are you looking for today? Or what brought you in today? Then you've got something different than the word no, right? It might be curiosity, or it might be my wife says I need new ties, right? If someone is curious, then you've got a certain way to go. But all I'm saying is the word what is much better than um whatever the yes and no uh answer right you want to get what are you thinking about not have you been thinking about it make sense how it's do you guys an engaging feel about that? question it's an engaging question rather than a shutdown question exactly Open this in. is this is uh this is sales salesman retail salesmanship 101 right there i mean yeah. never ask a yes or no answer right exactly well, it's like the restaurant. I mean, I just flip out when I go to a restaurant and the wait staff says, do you need anything else? Or would you like dessert, right? The answers are gonna be no. But if you said, we have an incredible dessert, uh, it's the chef just made it today. Is that something you might, is uh, between that and apple pie that's incredible, are either of those two something you might like to try? Maybe it's no, but at least you're inviting. And that's really in sales, we have to just think about being a little more patient and get the questions out. I hope that's helpful, um, but all things equal. What, what do you guys think of this slide here? Does anyone believe this? We have a thumbs up, yes. someone want yes. to? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, All right. of course. <laughs> uh, so April's mentioning my mac and cheese here. That's Belinda, I believe, with the mac I'm and cheese. So I'm she's, starving right now. She's that's the one that messed me up. No, maybe it's Daryl. It's Daryl. Um, okay, so people do buy from people they know, like, and trust. So think again, I asked early on if you guys have a close friend that once was a client, but now is a client and a close friend. And we're thinking of that person. Does that person ghost you? No. Right? Can you text that person and expect a response? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what's the difference? What are some reasons why they become friends? What would you say is the difference between the people that like that versus the clients who just ghost? They don't really care. So April started off on that one. I said, they know you care. They know you care. Okay. What else? You were trying to solve a problem for them, not sell them something. And that adds to what April just said. It shows that you're concerned with them. It replaces that sales relationship with a more, I'm concerned of you for you and about you. And that's what puts the relationship aspect on it and makes that connection. Yeah. Has anyone here, that's very good. Thank you, Robin. Has anyone here referred business to one of their clients? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yes. How much do they love you when you do that? Double thumbs up. Okay. So then when you text them and say, give me a call when you get a minute, what could they be thinking? More work. Yeah. But they, it might be that you're going to sell them something too. Right. But they don't know. So you, when you have those relationships where you refer business to someone or you just bend their ear and chat about, you know, life, politics, whatever it is that you guys and gals have things in commonality, uh, have the coffee periodic together uh, where it's a pleasant experience where you're not always talking about sales. Those are the people that won't ghost. So it's 
what would be a good goal for our clients and prospects? What do you want to become with them? Their friend. <laughs> yeah, right? And the sooner, the better. So this is not, I mean, I, I like the negative side of things sometimes. This is not how you become the friend. When you're talking about yourself, you know, I love these lines. I'm having a horrible day. Everything has gone wrong and blah, blah, blah. And you are the salesperson. I don't know if you've ever heard salespeople talk like that, but I have. And it's just Debbie Downer or Donald Downer. And no one wants to hear that stuff, right? They've got their own problems. And then you've got, uh, oh, by the way, I've got all this great new stuff. I've got new products that I thought you'd be interested in. First thing that comes out of the mouth. So instead of that, you gain trust by, and someone mentioned this earlier, and I appreciate you talking about value. I think that might have been April. Um, and this is the key. Does anyone know who this guy is? Gary Vanderchuk, if that's how you say his name. Gary V. That's Gary the only v. way I know how to say it. yes. Gary V. Yeah. Yeah. So Gary V. Is you don't need to buy his books. Everything that he will tell you, he does for free. He just says, "I will put out my content. You don't need to buy it. I'm here to help." Nice. <laughs> yeah. And in that? return, we heard that one. <laughs> and in return, you know, someone will pay it forward. Right, I love Gary V. I follow him and uh, watch his videos frequently. His latest uh, comment about being the most focused, unfocused, focused—that uh, was that was a great comment, great line. Did you catch that? No, what was I'm that? I'm the most unfocused, focused MF -er you ever met, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, not. He's, all right, so for those who are very religious, you have to like X out. Uh, he has got a horrible vocabulary. Yes, no doubt. Not no for doubt. the faint of heart. Um, and, you know, people get offended. So he loses a lot of people that find him offensive. And I get that, right? I'm at that age where I just don't care anymore. But, you know. Uh, so here's how you provide value. Is, uh, I was speaking to a person the other day. And they sold also some kind of health aid. And instead of sending... Think about what uh, you could send about skincare, Stephanie. Robin, I don't know what you do, but think about what kind of article that you can send that would help your prospects and clients that is not from your company or one of your brochures, right? Whether it be an ink magazine, whether it be in modern health, WebMD, um, you know, marketing for today's professional, you know, whatever those articles are that you're reading, and this is why you have to have a library. And what I do is I save these articles and then I will periodically send them to folks so that they are getting guidance, right? They're getting free information about what I think they might be interested in. You know, someone says, uh, uh, in passing, oh, I'm having a great uh, hard time with my teenager these days. And they put down the phone and say, always oh, calling me or whatever. Well, maybe you find an article about the stress of being a parent with teenagers. And here are some ideas, right? And nothing to do with the product you sell. And please don't send it in the email that says, oh, by the way, Next time you need an order, think of me, right? Because right? you just shot yourself for all the good you just did, you just <laughs> destroyed. But just what do people see when you do stuff like that? What do they see about you? That you care and that you're kind. Yes, yeah. exactly. You're thinking about them. You read the article and you were in their, that they, you were in, they were in your thoughts and you were concerned enough and thoughtful enough to send it. Yeah. So is anyone it's the friendship this? relationship? Thank you, Robin. Excellent. Is anyone doing this now? Periodically? Yeah. Right. Once or so, twice. Very rarely. 
Okay, so think about the people that have ghosted you, right? Instead of calling, 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 email, email, checking in, checking in, you know, just following up, you know, empty words, checking in and following up are the emptiest words you can use. <laughs> Try not to use them. That's what I use. <laughs> yeah, I know. I do too, but you just got to stop, right? You just, as soon as you write checking in, you got to go, crap, that's not what I'm doing. Yeah, all right. right? Scratching follow it out. Up. That's not what I'm doing. Right? So no here's Checking this, in, no following up. Right. Okay, good. And so <laughs> what you like in a subject matter, and it's to uh, Mary, the email, put in Mary thought of you for this. Right? Or, you know, Gabe. Thinking of you sending this, sending this. This made me so think now of they you. see their name and they see something that's going to get their curiosity. Yeah. All right. But at that point, have something there valuable. And then when they open, you don't want them opening up and then them saying, oh, crap, Gabe's asking for the damn order again. <laughs> right? I can't. So once you do that, they're never going to open an email again because they're afraid. But then you start getting articles, value, um, then stuff can happen, right? Treat them like your friends. Went to a great restaurant the other night. This is it. Trying to drive business for this restaurant. I love for them to stay here locally because they're awesome. You get a chance to check it out, right? That's out of the ordinary, right? But that's what you do with a friend. All right, so I don't want to keep you guys all day here. So I have this craft. I, again, you, if you can't tell, I'm a little bit passionate about sales. I've been doing it for decades, many decades. And I'm always reading about how to get better. Whether or not, it may not be a sales book. It may be, you know, a leadership book. It may be a culture book, but it's about people right? Understanding people, moving the needle, great books out there, uh, switch, uh, seeing the big picture. They're not sales books, but they're, or seeing big potential, big potential, I think is the name of the book, but they're not sales books, but they'll help you think about, uh, you know, how do you apply your craft? So caring, reading, podcasts, you know, lead, sell, grow, I hear is out there. It's not terrible. Uh, but there's a million of them. Uh, I listen to Selling from the Heart with Larry Levine. Um, Dale Dupree is another guy I listen to. But there's tons of podcasts. There's YouTube channels on sales. This is the one that I don't think a lot of people do. And it's hard. But it's role playing. Find, hook up with someone that is in sales and say, hey, can we bounce off some objections don't practice as much with a client. Practice with someone that can say, well, that really sucked, Gabe. You could do better, right? Why don't you try it? But you don't know, have some back and forth. I'm here for you, Gabe. I'm here you know for you. I mean. A little humor. And then uh, practice, practice, practice. This is your livelihood, right? You cannot show up and expect to close a deal when you haven't done it for weeks and be great at it. Role play with yourself, stand in front of the mirror if you have to, but know what objections, expect the objections and what are you going to say so you're not looking like, holy cow, I've never heard that one before. And then uh, that's it for me. I hope that's uh, worth your time. Uh, if someone wants to chat, I'm offering a 30 minute conversation that we can talk about what you're doing uh, we also have our Facebook group, uh, Lead, Sell, Grow, and my email, but I now have a new email address, but uh, you can use this old one, hspade3 at Gmail, but I also have Harry at leadcellgrow.biz.